The Women Conquer Business Show is an educational how-to women in business podcast that features stories, marketing news, and real-life experiences from fun and friendly hosts, Jen McFarland and Shelly Carney. Join us as we dive into the details so you can slay marketing overwhelm, streamline processes, and amplify your impact. You'll learn strategies and tactics, leadership skills, and practical advice from successful women entrepreneurs to help you grow, nurture, and sustain your business. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. (laughs) It's Jen McFarland and Shelly Carney. We're here. Woohoo! For our Women Conquer Business, this week's show, we're talking about Create Your Course Online, Best Online Course Platforms for 2022. Yay. With the rise, yay, with the rise of self publishing and the success on platforms such as YouTube, blogging, and podcasting, there's now a tremendous demand for online courses. And also, last week, we talked about e commerce in general and why e commerce is so big. By using online course creation platforms, businesses can create courses to sell or use internally. So amazing. These platforms are a great way to promote your brand, business products and services to increase revenue and attention and your audience. All kinds of things can happen. So this week, we'll take a look at the top online course platforms for creating, hosting and selling your online course. And I have a confession to make. I belong to a lot of course platforms. I think it's part of my addiction to apps. The other thing that I want to say is I can't even believe this. It is the 150th episode of the Women Conquer Business Podcast. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, my friend, you know, so funny. My friend Betsy Carver years ago said, you would be great on a podcast. I think you need to have one. And I was kind of like, why? What? And now it's been like four years later and still here and crazy. And it was the Third Paddle podcast. Now it's the Women Conquer Business Podcast. Now we're talking about changing the name again to Marketing How-Tos, since that's exactly what we're doing here. I mean, it's gone through so many iterations. If you were here four years ago and you're still here, wow. And thank you. That's so awesome. That's right. And uh, so let's... uh, Applause for it. Applause, applause for the whole whole thing. The whole thing. I know. And it's so crazy. um, Whoops. I mean, like, 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 <laughs> we can just play applause the whole time. Like, I, I can perform to that. I have no, no issue with that. You know, it's so funny because now this podcast is in the top 2.5% of all podcasts, um, which is another, like, accomplishment. Now, why? So cool. Can you tell me why? What is, what is it because it's been around so long, because you have so many uh, episodes, or is there more to it than that? You know, Listen Notes has their own algorithm for that. If you go to listennotes.com, you can go and that's like one of the big search engines for shows. I think a lot of it has to do with longevity, number of episodes. If you remember, most podcasts go out after like seven episodes. So pod fading is real. If you have the longevity, I think that's part of it. Um, I think it's, you know, reviews. It's all kinds of stuff. They kind of look at all of it. Um, So, I, I mean, it's just kind of a cool thing to look at or you know when we started i think we were top five percent so just you and i doing this regularly boosted it back up i think when i quit before it was at like three percent and now it's at 2.5 percent um certainly the people who are in the like 0.5 percent are like you know really big big shows so um that have a lot of support corporate support which we don't so it's a it's a pretty good little feather to be in the top 2.5% 2.5% as a little indie podcast that kind of started off as a fun side gig, <laughs> which is really what it was for me. I just like to talk. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's, it's kind of neat. Good, good way to go. It's a good thing to do. It's a good way to get your voice heard. And if you're really interested in that, I really encourage people to explore it. You know, is it right for you? Mm-hmm. And I know Shelly would agree with me because that's what she helps people with and stuff. That's right. It's so. once you've done it, you're like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be hard. <laughs> I wish we had that button, you know, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be harder than that. So, no, it's not pretty easy. I know it's not so bad. It's really easy. Yeah. Um, okay. So I am looking here and I see that you are closing a YouTube channel. What? That is correct. Uh Toby and I 
do a show on Wednesday evenings, and we have been uh, on a channel that we've been on since 2017, which started off as a Gypsy's Kiss, and we talked about Forest Fen Treasure, and then in 2020, that treasure was found. So we talked about our own treasure. We wrote a book called A Gypsy's Kiss, kind of explained our, you know, the story of where that name came from. Uh, and it's a true story from Toby's life. And then uh, we had a treasure hunt along with it. Once that treasure was found, then we're kind of floundering. What are we going to do now? Uh, and we've been kind of playing with that channel, trying to make a decision about what to do with it. Well, we finally made a decision. We're going to be doing uh, travel vlogging. And mostly cool. in New Mexico, Toby's bought cool. a uh, fish skiff boat inflatable uh, that you you know you can stand on. It's got chairs. It's a fishing boat, but it's small. And uh, we're going to take that out to different lakes in uh, in New Mexico and check those places out and make videos about it. And that is going to go on a brand new channel. Uh, we're leaving the channel that had. 6,300 subscribers because only 10 people were showing up for the shows anyway. So why not start over with just the people who are interested in what you're talking about? So last night we went on, we talked about, you know, it's time for us to have a clean break from what we were doing before and start a brand new channel uh, to freshen up our algorithm, our audience, uh, everything about it. It's going to be fresh and new. It's called New Mexico Day Trips. Whoop. And uh, we're going to do our own travel vlogging and uh, talk about, you know, boating on a budget. We're going to talk about yeah. uh, fishing and going places in New Mexico. And then we're going to interview people from other places who are also doing travel vlogging so that That's really we can cool. grow our audience in that way and grow the interest, you know, of oh, yeah. it's not just New Mexico. Now I see people who are in, you know, traveling through other places and what they're doing and what's to do there. So, so I saw a fun. picture of, all this boating stuff. Are you going to be doing cool things like unboxings of all that and like talking through, like putting all of those pieces together? I saw like a post. I can't remember if it was you or Toby about that. Yeah. Toby's been posting about it. He put out a video this week of all, he showed all the boxes in his garage, what's inside of them and how he's going to be putting this uh, boat project together. And funny thing is we have another channel where a few years ago he put together a, a boat, a, a trailer for a, a different kind of boat, small little boat. And uh, that was the number one and did a walk around of the whole thing, uh, the trailer and the boat. And that's the num like the number one video on that channel. And that channel has been around for so 10 cool. years. And that is yeah. like what everybody wanted to see. So we're like, okay, so well, let's do that. And, it, and for, for those of you who are listening, if you're not familiar with like an unboxing, Shelly, do you want to explain <laughs> what we mean by that? Well, basically, you just, you get something in, you know, from Amazon or wherever it comes in a box. You open up the box, you talk about what it is, how you're going to use it. People get excited because they live vicariously through you and it's like they just bought a boat. They get that same feeling. So they like exactly. to watch that with you. So all of which is to say... You can make videos about anything and people are going to be interested in it. That's true. Like, And there are entire channels that are just devoted to unboxing stuff. I, I It's it's, it's interesting true. to me. I, I love that stuff. So, there's, there's channels for kids where people just open up toys, new toys and new games for little kids, and they play with them. And that's it. <laughs> and kids love that stuff. I'll be honest. I've thought about having weekly shows on my YouTube channel where I'm just going through talking about software since I test so much of it. I've actually thought about doing that. And then I'm like, oh, it just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but when, but, when you can just throw it in there with, uh, here's what I, you know, looked at this week and here's what I thought of it, then, then it's not so much about, it's not so yeah. much. Yeah. So I think this sounds great. I love what you're saying because I feel like you're excited about it. Yeah, it, it was time. You know, we keep dragging these people along with us and they they don't want to be there. We don't want to be there, but they keep showing up. We're like, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that anymore. That's in the past. Now we're, we've got to move forward. And now that we've made that decision of what it is we're going to be talking about and, and that we're going to be bringing people on who are also doing travel vlogging. And we actually have, uh, you know, a couple of people in mind. Uh, there's, there's a woman called Wonder Hussy. She's got over 100,000 subscribers, <laughs> and she's been doing travel vlogging uh, for years, like like 
close to 10 years maybe. And oh, she's awesome. got a huge audience. So uh, we have interviewed her in the past and we'll br- try to bring her on again and, yeah. and, and share her uh, insights. That's awesome. I know a few people that do different things, like one person who talks about different backpacks for traveling mm-hmm. and hiking and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's just all kinds of, it's like very expansive. I'm feeling like this is very expansive. You have a lot. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, it's a, we're calling it day trips because we live right in the middle of New Mexico. So there's pretty, we can pretty much go anywhere in New Mexico and back in a day. I mean, if we go down to Las Cruces, that's a four hour drive. So we really got to get up early if we wanted to do that, but we could make that happen. Um, pretty much anywhere in New Mexico, we could go there and back in one day. So day <laughs> so trips. Cool. Oh, let me know when you go to Truth or Consequences. I might just show up and sit in a hot tub and <laughs> talk there's, to y'all. <laughs> there is a lot of hot springs in New Mexico that, that uh, people just don't realize that if they yeah. haven't been here. Yeah. it's I love New Mexico. Love it. Love it. So uh, what is it you wanted me to talk about? Do you want me to talk about that I bought new office supplies? Is that the... I don't think so. <laughs> Last week, somebody told me they were going to go drive some big, fancy, fast yeah. car around Well, the track. we talked about it, right? We talked about it last week. So yeah. last Thursday, I talked about how I was, I, how my husband got me this gift of driving a Lamborghini, and I was going to go do that on Friday, and I did it, and it was awesome it was everything that i expected it would be and more it was a Lam- lamborghini huracan and we were at portland international speedway or raceway pir here in portland oregon and i had so just to be clear i go in i register i bought all of the things so i have a video i have pictures <laughs> my husband made fun of me but like no, what am I going to do this again? So I went in. Like and, I and, said, you can make a whole right. page in your website about it. And now you've I've got all the stuff it. to go in it. I just needed like some time to kind of process this experience, to be honest with you. So I, you know, so we show up at on the day and get all registered. And then the first thing is we have to go into this class. And the class is like awesome and scary at the same time. Like it kind of like really grounded me in the fact that I was about to drive a $250,000 car. Right. Like you kind of are like, kind of like, oh, like I can't afford to replace this thing. And they're like, if you hit a cone, if you hit, you know, how like on the side of a track that kind of rumble strips, if you hit a rumble strip, if you go into the grass, like you're going to damage the car and you're going to have to pay for it. And I was like, okay. Like (laughs) I think my voice cracked even at the time, you know, (laughs) and it had like kind of all these rules and stuff. And I had bought more insurance because the, what came with the package was like a $6,000 deductible. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't want to pay that much. So I paid a little more so that the deductible went down to 2000, but I really, so it kind of freaked me out. Right. Like I didn't want to pay for damaging this car. Um, realized when I walked up to the car, the reason why anything could damage it is it's like incredibly low to the ground. Like I drive a Mustang, it's low to the ground. This was like, even it was so low to the ground. I sit down. Oh, so then um, we waited in line. I didn't do, I sh- which I should have. I just didn't understand everything on the website. They had a lead car package where you could ride with somebody and learn the track. But I was confused about what time and like how all that worked. So I didn't do that. Uh, so I'd never been to this raceway before. I'd never driven a car like this before. So I get in. There's an instructor sitting next to me. But to be clear, this is not driver's ed. They do not have brake pedals or steering wheel over there. I'm driving the car. I'm working the pedals. And on the racetrack, they had cones. And they were basically like, if it's this color cone, you need to brake. If it's this color cone, you know, you 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 need to not brake. So it's not accelerating. And then if it's a green cone, you get to go, right? And then there were all these hand signals that the instructor was giving me and all of, you know, (laughs) I mean, there's a lot going on. So the whole experience was like 10 minutes, um, but it was, it was crazy and it was awesome. And so I'll admit that the first lap I'm driving like a grandma, like I'm kind of like, I could hit, I could go off the road. Burp, 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 burp. And there's like on the video, which I bought, there's even one, one part where he's like, the ice cream is melting. The <laughs> cops are on your tail. Like, and I can tell he's just sort of like, come on, come on, you know? So, and you only get three laps. So the first oh. lap was really kind of like learning the track. Mm-hmm. The second time around, I'm going a little bit faster. We hit the straightaway and he's like, come on, sister. And I like hit the gas pedal as hard as I can, like to the floor. And I got it up to 161 miles an hour. 
And I can tell you that in watching the video, and I remember screaming when I got up around 120 miles an hour, I just went, Woo! and I was like, like, I had this look on my face of just like, yeah, like we're doing this, you know, and I like, <laughs> and then it went and it, you know, cause the car is like incredibly smooth. It's amazing what $250,000 in one car can do because <laughs> The force of going that fast, I'd never gone, obviously, 100, I hadn't gone 120 before. I've gone over 100 before in Idaho. Shh, don't tell mom. <laughs> uh, and so <laughs> on like country roads and stuff. So, but, you know, the car, like when I did it before, the car was shaking. Like everything felt like it was going to fall apart just before I had my Mustang. And, but when you go 160 miles an hour in a car that's going to go 202, which is how fast the Lamborghini can go, the car was not shaking but my body was because the force of like going that fast. And I can say that like, right as he's saying like, get off, you know, there's like a part in the video he's like saying, you know, get off the gas. But like at that moment, like my eyes are shaking and like the track, I mean, everything is moving back and forth. It's a very intense moment and also very joyful for me. Like it was kind of both, you know? Um, so it was awesome, you know, went like 120 at one point, 160 at one point, and like 100 and 110, 115 or something at another point. So it was pretty exciting, pretty invigorating. Afterwards, uh, and John was there the whole time. He was just like, Rah! you know, very cool. <laughs> and then afterwards, we went to this place. It's so cool. It's called the Island Cafe. And it was, so it was almost like a whole vacation, you know, like because the Island Cafe is near the, the raceway just in a it's just a part of town we don't get to very often so we went to the island cafe sat along the river um you know john had a beer i had like a pina colada <laughs> we just pretended like we were on vacation we were like right on the river where all these house um like floating homes are and you know people driving by in boats and stuff it was just a really pleasant day so uh it was really amazing i if you like to drive fast um you know, go out and do it. They travel all over the country and they also do like things on the road, um, the regular road where you're not going that fast. So it's a, it's a really cool experience. I've told some people and I can tell they're like clutching the pearls <laughs> and like really nervous. So it's definitely something if it's your thing, like to do it, but otherwise you could probably skip it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Fun. Really exciting. Super Especially uh, just having recovered from my concussion and let's really put it to the test. <laughs> so we have somebody who wants to know, are we talking about online course platforms? Yes. Today? Sorry. Yes. We kind of got, I know. Sorry. We got a little sidetracked. We are going well, to talk about We had about to that. talk about that. It was so cool. So, it's such all a right. cool story. So let's, let's slide into breaking news. It's really quick today. All right. So uh, our friends over at Near Media are reporting that Yelp, um, their new business stream is selling your business data. So if you've invested a lot of time, money, and effort into Yelp, just know that they are also benefiting from that. For years, I've told people don't, you know, put your posts on, you know, put, have a business profile on Yelp, but don't buy their ads. They've been largely seen as a scam uh, now. <laughs> we know that they're selling your business information. Uh, so if you're going to get a rise in um, spam emails and calls and things like that, it could be coming from Yelp. Wow. I've never, li I've never liked them. <laughs> never liked them either. <laughs> <I don't like laughs> them. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's it yeah. for breaking news. Do you have anything, Shelly? No. Okay. Let's move into training. Let's move into training. So there you go. We are in fact going to talk about online course platforms. That's right. And here we are. Boom. Boom. Um, let, me, let me see if I can present. Presenting. Right. Jen slides. Presenting my slides. Okay. So before we talk about the specific platforms, just really briefly, we have like three winning strategies heading into this. So the first one is, oh, it's actually not, but there's a few compelling reasons for creating digital products. We're not going to spend too much time on this because we did talk about e-commerce a little bit last week. But one of the reasons why people talk about doing courses so much is it takes you from a one-to-one -one client relationship into one-to-many. That means you can be talking to a lot of people all at the same time, and it's like leveraging your time a lot better. One of the other reasons is it's a passive income stream. People can buy your courses and you're not in front of them. You could be sleeping and earning money while you sleep. 
The third reason is it also creates a curated experience for your audience. So based on what they need, what they want, that's one of the reasons why you create courses. It's really important to do that. So uh, one of the other things to really consider as you're like going into this, it's like kind of the, the small online business dilemma. I also have like small business marketing dilemmas. Um, but when you're going to be creating a lot of online content, you have to realize, you know, you have to think about how this balances out with maybe the rest of your business or with what it is that you like to create. You know, do you have the time, passion and patience for content creation? Because sometimes it takes a while. <laughs> it's not necessarily free. Um, you know, do you have the resources for things like a course platform, video and audio editing, and then, of course, marketing um, and then the value. So do online courses and products add value to your business? Um, and how soon do you need it? So uh, sometimes people don't give themselves enough of an on-ramp before needing the financing and the money from a course platform. And just understand that it can take a little bit of time uh, before you start to generate a lot of serious money from it, depending on how big your audience is, how big your email list is, and how aggressive you are about getting people into it. That's right. It's like any digital product. If you're doing it on your own, then you are responsible for selling it on your own, marketing it, getting it out into the world, um, bringing people into it. Um, if you want somebody else to do that for you, then put it up on somewhere like Udemy and let them take care of all the marketing and you just create course after course. You can do that too. Uh, of course, yeah. they're going to give you a portion of the income from that uh, because a lot of their a lot of your money or a lot of the money that goes into places like Udemy or uh, Skillshare or one of those that, that has courses online, a course online platform, they do the marketing for you. They do. And you mm -hmm. pay for that <laughs> every time they sell your course. They, they get uh, most of the money. You get some of the money and uh, that pays for your marketing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, another one is Maven. Uh, that's getting a lot of talk around town um, and they do the same thing. Uh, okay. So they take a lot of the money and, but they're helping to advertise it. So that's the right. cool thing about Maven is they're actually teaching you about their platform as well, um, which is kind of neat. So, okay. So the first strategy is to begin with the end in mind. And what I mean by that is how does it fit into your customer journey? Where, at what touch points are they going to come in and maybe have that fork in the road, right? Like you can either work with me one-on-one -on -one or you can take this course. Or maybe you work with people and there's some things that you don't want to work with people on one-to-one -on -one anymore and they can go and investigate it deeper and then come to you with questions as part of your consulting. Like there's so many different ways that you can take e-commerce courses you know, whatever online content you want to sell and you can like bridge that to what you're doing now, or you can be kind of like us and we're trying to like work into maybe making this more of a centerpiece of our businesses. The other point is what will your students learn? A lot of times people get into trouble because they are like, well, I just want to do something so people are going to hire me. And that's not really the right attitude <laughs> to go into this with. Um, you have to think about transformation. You have to consider where people are going to be at the end because it helps them navigate um, whether or not they want to buy from you, whether they want to do it. If is Are they going to get out of this what they expect and what they want? It can't just be like a big sales pitch. A lot of people do that. Um, I think it's a mistake. Um, and then the third part is, you know, how are you going to get the word out? One of the things with Epiphany Courses is we realized we didn't want to do huge marketing campaign after huge marketing campaign. We would rather just go all in with one fee and you get all of the courses rather than here's a course for $75, here's a course for $450, and then having a huge ramp up for marketing. We'd rather be more rapid in what we create. Um, sell it at a slightly lower price <laughs> and get the word out once about everything that we have. So you really have to think about um, your marketing after you make it, um, but you have to do it at the beginning because it'll really help you be more successful. And I'm sure that's what you are doing with your stuff, right, Shelly? Right. The, the number one thing you want to focus on for me is that what are, what's that transformation? What, and that is on your sales page. Here's what you're going to 
have or know or learn or be able to do, here's where you're going to be after you finish this course. And then you list those things out, you know, um, for me, yeah. it was like, you'll be able to, uh, put out a live stream every week, like clockwork. You'll be able to put out a book, maybe two books every year. You'll be able, you know, all of these things that, that are where they want to be and that they will get to when they finish your course. All of the information is super important to know before you even begin building the course and to put on your sales page to right. say, here is the transformation that you can expect. And part of it, so like getting back to Ruth Ann's question about like, are you going to discuss online course platforms? Before we even talk about platforms, we have to talk through a couple of things first, because the more you know ahead of time, the better equipped you are to choose the right platform. So that's why even though we've started talking about courses and platforms, we haven't gotten there yet uh, because it's expensive. It takes a lot of time and you have to consider a lot of things before you do it. Yes. And I know Shelly agrees with me. Oh, <laughs> You're going to get sick to death of this course by the time you finally get it up and running. <laughs> so the second strategy is to be sure that you're answering customer questions. Um, and you do this for a lot of different reasons. Your course and content are like hidden in plain sight. It means that a lot of the best courses and the most successful things that you can do are the questions that you're getting over and over and over again. There's so much that you can sell because other people don't know how to do it. So that's the first thing. Uh, if you don't know what you're going to talk about, or if you're kind of like, well, I want to talk about this, but I'm not sure, that's one of the places to look. Those are the rocks, right? On earlier episodes, we've also talked about making things SEO friendly. Um, understand, like test it out, like look up on Google um, some of your course topics. See if it's phrased the way that you're phrasing it. See if people are asking those questions. Who else has already answered those questions? And are those answers good enough? How can you make your answer different? Those are all things that are important because they'll help you get traction in the long run through some SEO. Uh, the next part is be sure that you ask your audience, ask the people in front of you. I see that Ruth Ann smiled. So, uh, so I know that she's still out there. Thank you so much. Um, the third point is to ask your audience what it is that they need. Ask your customers. You might not know what they need, um, but you know how to answer their questions. So that's another strategy to really think of ahead of time. All of these strategies will help you get more sales out of the gate. And that's really what we want to help you with. That's what we're trying to enable you to do. That's right. And a lot of times you're going to, if you've already worked with clients and you, or you've just been in a place where people continue to come to you for a particular kind of help, then you know exactly what to put into your course. It's those things that people have the most trouble with, the things that they're getting stuck on. Absolutely. So the third strategy, I know people are usually like, oh, why does Jen always talk about planning? It is so important. <laughs> it is. It's, <laughs> it's so important. It's going to save your life. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Shelly agrees with me on this. Um, yes. But like online product development takes time, and it's so funny when I have when I have taught this locally here in Portland, and been on like e-commerce panels, and I talk about the digital this this si si part of it creating digital products. And I had my colleague off to the side who makes physical products. Um, my friend Celeste, who runs Thunder Pants USA out of Portland, she read all of this and she read about all the strategies and she's like, oh my God, this is just like making a physical product. So you have to realize that what you're creating is just like the products that you're buying in some ways. It has to be useful. You have to plan it out and it takes a lot of time. So that means when we talk about it on the course side, we're talking about like your titles and topics. They have to be really well developed. You have to really be thinking about it. You have to create videos. You, maybe you have handouts or a workbook. Um, you'll also need some sort of sales page, um, some sort of funnel to like bring people in and let them know exactly what it is that they're going to get out of it. You have to set up pricing. You have to build your decks. Um, maybe you have to do some sort of like product build. And you might think, well, it's not really one for a course, but sometimes you have to package things in certain ways to get interest. So you have to really kind of think about, you know, what this whole product is that you're presenting to somebody. Um, how are you going to 
sell it, you know, and then after that, it's like the marketing strategy and execution and then the sales beyond that. Are you going to have affiliates? Are you going to have other people selling it on your behalf? What does that look like? How are you going to get the word out? So this is all before, um, before you pick a platform. And the reason for that is different platforms do different things well. <laughs> and so depending on what it is that you want it to do, um, and if Ruthann is still watching, she may have some questions as we start going through stuff. And if you are watching or if you're listening at home, um, be sure to email us at hello at womenconquerbiz.com. We can answer some questions. Yes. <laughs> are you just waving? What are you no, doing? I have a question. <laughs> I wanted okay. you to uh, explain what is a deck. Is that your slides? What is it? Yeah. Slide deck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Slides, um, your PowerPoint. Because your... actually personally i start with the title and topic but that's the second thing i do is the slide so yeah but, i mean it's not necessarily in any any sort of yeah. order that's um, why it confused me i'm like wait a minute where what is that <laughs> am i building a deck on the house what's what is a deck <laughs> yeah no it's a yeah well i mean it could be i don't you know mm. i don't know so um if that's your core sure <laughs> but i mean and this is just kind of a laundry list so you have a lot to think about um, and if you already have a platform, certainly the platform, you know, whatever you make next time, it just goes, it just feeds into all of that. So, um, okay. So let's start. I think this next one is, um, where you're going to talk about, yeah, your favorite course platform, Shelly. So oh. let's start there. Well, let me first address what, what I look for in a platform, um, Number one, it needs to be easy to organize. I have to be able to understand it and work with it in a in in a user friendly manner, right? It has to make sense, and and you don't have. I can't be keep keep going back and forth and into other you know pages and other places and in. You know, oh, I, I've tried some things that make you do that, and it and it makes you crazy. So it's got to be easy to organize. It's got to <laughs> accept video, audio, text, and images for your course. Uh, so that you have all those options. Maybe you want to yeah. give people a video they can watch, they can sit down at their desk and watch, but you also want to give them a downloadable audio. So if they want to go, you know, listen to it while they're walking around and doing things or in their car, you can give them a downloadable audio so they can have that as another option. Uh, you yeah. want to have le learning management tools that that give you that uh, back and forth with your students so that if they get stuck, they have questions um, they they don't they don't understand or they're in some way unsure or un, uh, maybe afraid of doing something. For instance, yeah. in my course, we recommend specific equipment to have in your home for live streaming. This is a sticking point for some people because they're afraid to buy equipment and then have it be the wrong thing. So at that point, we want to have a lot of conversation and maybe even a, a, a call with them, a video call so that we can assure them that they're getting the right thing. So have that yeah. learning management tool to know where people are getting stuck and to be able to insert that help at that point. You want a payment integration so that when people are ready to buy your course, they can easy, easy boom, I bought it. And then let's get started. So you got to have that payment integration for that. And then you want a landing and sales page integration so that you can have that funnel where you bring them to that landing page, that sales page, and then they get started and then they buy and then they move into those things. So those are the things that I want in to see in a platform. And if I don't see them, that means I'm going to have to cobble things together and I'm not good at that. I don't have time for that. And, and it, and it, it slows everything down when you have to cobble stuff together. So I, I'm not yeah. a fan of that. The so, only thing that I would add to this mm -hmm. is, so it has to be easy to organize. It has to be easy for you to use. The best the best platform, and I think Shelly and I have talked about this before, is the one that you use. That's true. So even if we're going to give you options, like you have to test them out. Um, the other thing I would say is be sure to do things as a student. <laughs> like, is it so... So I'm not, I don't want to spend a lot of time like hating on products, but like some people just say like Kartra, for example, is a really good all-in-one platform. But have you ever taken a class as a student in Kartra? Mm -hmm. I have, I have, mm -hmm. I have bought classes on Kartra. I hate the experience as a student. Mm. It's awful. It's not easy to, to use. I get confused about what I am supposed to do. Um, so, so that's an example of easy for you not easy for your students. So, um, Ruthann has a question. 
Yeah. She wants so. to know, is the landing sales page hosted to the web or is it specific to the platform? It depends, <laughs> I would say. So if you are using, um, if you're using, and you can speak to Vonza because I know that that's what you're using, but if you're using Teachable or Podia or uh, Thinkific, um, Kajabi, certainly, they all have landing pages um, or sales pages included in it. Um, and Podia, Teachable, a lot of them also include all of the emails on the back end. So if you want to send out like drip emails as people go through a course, um, it will do that. Um, not all platforms do it. Um, so you could also work your landing and sales pages through um, if you're already using something like a, you know, click funnels or lead pages or something else, you could do it that way. For ease of use when you're getting started, um, it's kind of nice <laughs> to have it as part of the platform that you're using. Um, it's all kind of personal preference at that point. Very good. So uh, my favorite course platform, and I have gone through several. I've I've tried Udemy, I've tried Teachable, I've tried Member Vault, I've tried uh, Product Dino, I've tried. Um, oh gosh, now I'm forgetting the name of it. It was the coaching one. Uh, oh coach, yeah, yeah. Up Coach, it's Up Coach, Up Coach, yeah. and then I settled on Vonza. Uh, the reason I like Vonza is it has all the integration of all the different things. You can create a website, you can create a landing page, you can create a funnel, you can uh, bring in the email list and, and email from there. You can uh, put your course in there. You can have a membership if you want. You can have uh, a CRM. There, there's, there's so many different things integrated into it. But one of the things that I like the most is you can purchase it. You never, you're not paying a monthly fee like you do with some of these like Teachable. Uh, so I yeah. I prefer that as well. If it's at all possible to purchase the online course platform product uh, and then, you know. And you mean and outright. You have it. So you don't have like, to fake payments, right? Yeah. For example, you bought <laughs> yeah. Vonza on AppSumo. Exactly. Um, I have a member vault account because I was one of their founding 100 members. I never have to pay for it again. Uh, if if you have an opportunity for a really good platform that you find and you can buy it outright, it is good because you don't have to you don't have that ongoing cost of the platform, plus the fees that people take off of the top of any payments. Plus, I mean, it can be really expensive, and that's what we mean about like the ongoing costs yeah. um, and, and all of that. So, um, do you have is is your Vonza at a place where we can look at it? Or not yet? Uh, not really, not yet. I haven't published <laughs> because I don't have the videos done yet. Um, okay. I've got everything but the videos done. I'm saving those for the last because I'm still, I was still tweaking the, the, the curriculum every time I would do another show or I would work on something else. I would go, oh, I need to add that to my curriculum. So I wanted to make sure my curriculum was at a point where it was set in stone before I started doing the videos and, mm -hmm. and actually setting it into stone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, do you have any other favorite platforms you wanted to talk about? Well, and one of the things that Vonza does as well is it will accept a video. Like if I make a video, a course video, a training video, it will accept up to one gigabyte, uh, video. And I've found that if I am recording at 720p on StreamYard, uh, I can do up, you know, 30, 40 minutes and still not get to that one gig uh, limit. So I can embed or I can upload my videos, my original video into the course platform where a lot of these, they require you to have it hosted somewhere like on mm -hmm. YouTube or Vimeo, Vimeo or somewhere and then, uh, you know, Im Im embed the code. And and so they are they are out there. So somebody could actually stumble across the course video in that way. Um, they all, Vonza also offers you the opportunity to do that if you want to do it that way. Like if you'd already had your videos up on YouTube and you wanted to create a course with them, they, they give you that uh, ability, but you can also just upload them directly into the platform. So I kind of like that about it. I think it's really cool. And I'm so glad that you found something that, um, that works and it's at Vonza. Uh, vonza.com, uh, V-O-N-Z-A.com. 
Um, it is an all-in-one platform. So I think that, you know, it, it whenever you do an all-in-one platform, that's when you really have to do your due diligence. Like you did UpCoach and it wasn't an all-in-one platform that worked for you. You did your due diligence on Vonza and it really works for you. My recommendation for everybody out there is if you're looking at a Kartra, a Kajabi, a Vonza, um, there's a whole, you know, even Podia to an extent is an all-in-one. Always know that you have to give up something. Like it's never good at all of the things. So the upside is it's all in one place. It's super easy for you, the entrepreneur, to navigate it. You can learn it like the back of your hand and it will be seamless for you. It'll be great. Um, the downside is someday you might want to do something a little different and it might not be able to do it. It's just a risk, but there's risk in everything. <laughs> like nothing is going to be absolutely perfect. Right. So as long as we just have awareness of that, then it then we just go and and do it, you know. Um, so, you know, for example, when I talk about what I'm doing for Epiphany courses, it's not anything that I'm recommending today because we have such a different thing that we're doing um, over there that makes it different. So, um, so yeah, uh, are there any other platforms you wanted to share before you take a drink? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Jen and I both really like heartbeat, but I like it for the, um, interaction of the students and, uh, peer to peer. And then of course, appearing there in there as the instructor, but also as a friend who can talk people through things and keep them from getting stuck. So, um, and, and you can also use heartbeat in, as, uh, as an entry level free place. And then you can talk you know, talk to them about taking the course and adding that on. And then in heartbeat, you can add on a member group just for those people who are in the course and, right. uh, and, and give them that special treatment in there. Yeah. And uh, we're using heartbeat for something a little different. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. I love how you're going to use it. I think it's perfect. Um, and heartbeat I love because it's super well supported. Um, and no matter what platform you choose, make sure this is, this is, these are like, some of this is like basic, uh, software buying here, right? Like go in, test out the product, test out customer service. If they're not going to answer your questions when you're on a free trial, <laughs> imagine what it's going to be like when, you, when you're paying for it. <laughs> like it can be worse. So make sure you go in, try it, see what customer service is going to be like, read reviews, not just the ones that are like, hey, the super awesome, brr, 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 brr like that are affiliate links, get in the weeds, yeah. read the ones that are negative too. Um, and, and it helps you make these decisions. So my course platforms are a little bit different. Um, <laughs> part of it's because I have an app addiction that we've talked about many times. So if you are a non-technical entrepreneur and you want to have a website, but you don't need like a super heavy duty learning management system. And by that, I mean uh, something that tracks how far into each lesson people are going um, all of the things that Shelly just talked about, <laughs> about the back and forth, um, Squarespace has now become a, like a great place where you can have premium content. You can have a membership, you can sell and pay, have paid newsletters, have paid courses, digital downloads. Um, it's great for podcasting. Um, and then they also have bought Acuity. So you can do all of your scheduling through there. You can do all of that for like, two to three hundred dollars a year so if you're low budget not a lot of techie skills and you don't need again the heavy lifting of a full learning management system um, this is a good option for you um, this is also a good like i'm going to do everything i'm going to try out courses uh, i need a website anyway and then if my courses get too technical or too hard or i need more out of them you can always spin off to a course platform like a, you know, like Teachable Vonza, Thinkific, something like that. So this is this is a good starter option um, and they're really beautiful. Um, other starter starter platforms that you could use forever. <laughs> These are like because I'm a big believer of starter course platforms that can be your forever home. Uh, if you have no budget. Gumroad is a good option. It's free forever, but they charge transaction fees based on sales. So Gumroad, you can sell anything. 
It's great for creators, um, but you may have to charge a little more <laughs> so that your take home is better. And then the more you sell, the lower their fees are. So you have to think about it, right? Like you may not pay, you know, $150 a month for something like a gum road, but if your course is like $6,000 and they're taking 9% off of that, you're actually paying more for a platform like Gumroad or Udemy or Maven, whatever it is. Um, but Gumroad is a good place to start. Um, it's kind of, yeah. And they do courses. They do all kinds of things. It's just more robust than like a Patreon or something like that. The next level, and I have used this platform. I enjoyed it. I found it a little limiting, um, but it's Podia. And it is, if you are one person, you're not going to have a lot of different teachers, um, and you're not very technical, Podia is a great option. $33 a month to start, and then it goes up from there. There's no transaction fees. It includes uh, email marketing, email for your courses, um, not a CRM. So it's not, it's different than Vonza. Vonza is good for coaches. Podia is good for coaches slash content creator um, type. Uh, it's, it's just a, a little bit different. The websites are nice. It does a website, uh, but kind of like Kajabi, you don't really want your whole website on there because it doesn't, it's not as flexible for a website, not as great of SEO, but they do have, it is a nice user interface as a student. It's great to use. It can be very clean. I have clients on Podia. They love it. Um, probably the best full featured LM, you know, learning management system that you can grow into is Thinkific. Um, it's way more flexible than Teachable. You can integrate a lot more things with it. Um, it is in general, um, of the big behemoth uh, learning management systems, it's really good, but it also gets really expensive really fast. So it, you know, to get all of the full features, you know, it's $150 a month. But unlike Kajabi, which starts at like $150 a month, <laughs> you know, you can grow into it to an enterprise grade level and you kind of top out at that $150 a month for like the best business tools that they have to offer. Okay. Anything you got? Um, yeah, I just, I don't, if you can avoid a monthly payment, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it just depends on, yeah, it just depends on what it is that you want, you yeah. know? Uh, and then if we go into more advanced, I feel like we have to answer kind of all of the questions that I anticipate people having. So um, advanced platforms. So Member Vault, when I joined Member Vault, I got it. I'm a founding 100 member. Um, I have, I can show you my Member Vault right here. Um, and this is the, if you go to courses.womenconquerbiz.com, uh, it's, this is what it looks like. I have a little promo to the podcast. Um, I have a lot of, they're really big on celebrations and like getting people in with gamification. So it means like as people finish things, you know, you get engagement points, those engagement points, you can then say when somebody goes through so many lessons, they get a free course or they get, you know, whatever it is that you decide that they get. Um, that's kind of the basis of it. Um, they've now made it much more robust than when I first joined as a founding member. Um, but if you go in here, like there's an automation station, um, there's a button here where if you want to schedule a consult with me, you can. And then I only have three courses up here. It's really pretty basic um, because I do work with people who are on Member Vault. So full disclosure, like I'm one of their consultants. So um, so that's that's really what the thrust of what this is here for. Member Vault used to have a really robust free plan. And in the last few months, they made some business changes. And so now they are all in one plan at $99 a month. Now, I I think that's great for them. I love what they have what they are doing with their business. They have a lot of support. Um the downside of that is not everybody can do an entry point at $99 a month. So they're making a business decision about who it is that they want to help. It's a wonderful company, very supportive um and really great, but it's expensive for many people at that price. 
if you want to have a learning management, if you want to, if you have a WordPress website and you want to have a full meal deal on your WordPress website, there are a couple things about that. One, it is phenomenally flexible. I mean, you could probably like upload a chicken into WordPress and like sell it if you wanted to. I don't know. We'll have to talk to my friend, uh, Bridget Willard about that. She's, she's the one working on the chicken farm, not me, but I will say, and it's great for SEO, but it's very technical. Um, sometimes when you add things like Learn Dash or some of these other learning management systems to WordPress, you have to really, again, think about the user experience. Are you sending somebody to the back end of a WordPress website <laughs> so that then they figure out which course they're going to take? So you don't really want to do that because WordPress is a turnoff to a lot of people if they're not very technical. And I've taken courses from people and somehow I end up like, in this weird like am i an admin of this website <laughs> kind of place and i don't i don't like being in there uh, but you can spend the money for an access ally and it is fully featured a wonderful membership platform but it's, you're paying for it i mean it's 82 to 208 dollars a month for access ally plus the cost of your wordpress website um, super technical to set up. If you don't know WordPress, um, you're probably going to have to have a developer to help and then access Ally from what I've read and heard from colleagues is really good for with helping you on that end too. But you probably need some help with that. And then the last of the courses I, I want to talk about today is Kajabi because everybody asks me about Kajabi. Um, as an entry point course platform, um, I don't really like it for that. Like I know people who got into Kajabi like years and years ago when it was super, super affordable <laughs> and less featured. Um, it's, it's great for coaches. I know Brendan Burchard talks about it all the time. He's part owner. So like bear that in mind. <laughs> if you do it, he's getting affiliate and he also owns it. So um, bear that in mind. It's not a website replacement. I work with people who put went all in on um, Kajabi, terrible for SEO, not the best like all-in-one uh, website platform because you're giving up a lot. I don't necessarily like it if you're getting in and it's not just the $150 a month part. It's that there are a lot of limitations at $150 for Kajabi that don't exist on other platforms. Uh, Podia, Thinkific, Vonza, what I'm doing on Ghost, like all these things, I can make as much stuff as I want and sell it. I can test it out and see what people respond to. On Kajabi, that's not really the case. You have a limited number of products at all levels, I believe. Um, maybe if you go to $3.99 a month, you can make as many courses as you want. You have a limited number of people, um, which most people aren't going to bump up against, the limited number of emails you can send out. All these limitations <laughs> make it really hard to test things out. If you have um, an established audience, if you have courses that you've been running for a long time, you can, it's a great platform when it's established. You can take your audience with you there. Um, Kajabi is great if you have something settled and you have people to support you and help you with Kajabi. Um, it is somewhat easy, but it's not the easiest course platform um, to work with. Yeah, and I think I think it's got uh, that whole big name coach thing going for it. Like you said, Brendan Bouchard, uh, James Wedmore, these are people who own stock in it and they promote it. So it sounds really good because it's coming from somebody you like to hear from, uh, one of these influencers. But when, like you said, it's very expensive and, and it does limit you in ways that other other platforms don't. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, it, and, and it's fine. I mean, you just have to know, you know, I just know a lot of people who've made the leap and then kind of been like, oh, well, this part isn't as easy. You know, like I had a client uh, move off of Squarespace, move to Kajabi, get off of ConvertKit and then go back on ConvertKit because the email wasn't going to do enough. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard. You have to really think about yeah. your business goals, how much you're willing to give up of how of the way you do things so to speak <laughs> like how much are you willing to give up in order to be on this platform because again with all-in-ones there's some give and take um you just have to decide what it is that you're willing to do 
Um, I have, uh, <laughs> full disclosure, I have a Teachable website as well. Um, we have a funnel right now going through AppSumo. We have a product on AppSumo. They hit Teachable. Um, Teachable was great because we could bulk upload coupons and send people through there. But this is how I learned that I don't really like Teachable. <laughs> We're going to let that subscription go when we decide to let go of AppSumo. Uh, the AppSumo offer that we have is for this ultimate podcast planning checklist. It's been a great feeder for like building our email list. So we're not quite ready to give it up. Uh, what we are ultimately using on Epiphany courses is a little bit different. So I create a lot of content. I've had this show for four years. I teach um, digital marketing all over the region. <laughs> and I have audio lessons that are on another platform that I make passive income from. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. So I have a ghost website where I can put all of my long form blog posts um, and one hour sprint courses because that's most of what Epiphany courses is or like short courses that can send people on their way. So um, so this is an example of what it looks like. If you have something really basic, you don't need a full learning management platform. This is an example of just saying, OK, I have a video. I have some lessons. Um, this is what it can look like for somebody else. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have a lot of fun with it, right? So you don't need to have like a full, we run our landing pages through through Ghost. We do all kinds of stuff. We don't have a full, full learning management system for these one hour sprint courses. Then we're using Heartbeat as our online community. Um, and if you go to the end of any lesson, it says, you know, do you want to talk about this lesson more? Um, Here's our, you know, join the community conversation. If you click on that, it sends you to Heartbeat. Um, in Heartbeat, we have threads where people can communicate. You can hop on a call with somebody else. Um, we have our social hour. We have our kind of governing documents for. Progress logs around stories and goals and things like that. So we're using Heartbeat a little bit differently. And then, as I said before, I have a, a lot of courses up on, a, on another platform that are audio only. So we are also using a mobile app called Soundwise that people can use and get um, courses. They can get, they can get all audio only courses. They can download handouts from there. Um, and then they can engage in conversation also from the Soundwise app. So that's how we've sliced and diced it. I'm, as you can tell, I have multiple platforms, but I'm very comfortable doing that. Um, and everybody is a little bit different. Yes. And it took you a long time to get to this place. It did. Cause like I said, I've got like a couple other platforms. So yeah. um, that's how I do it. Do you have anything else to add? Does anybody have any questions out there? I know that people are watching, so. Um, I don't have anything else to add to course creation other than it's a good feeder mm -hmm. for bringing people into a membership group, uh, like heartbeat. I, I look, look for, uh, you know, I kind of actually put courses in the middle. You bring people into the community and to the free community, show them the courses and then put them into a premium part of the community if they're in the course. So that's how I kind of structure mine. Absolutely. And for me, like, like for me, like the podcast is top of the funnel. Um, and then I have different right. stops along the way. And Epiphany is really created for people who can't afford ongoing one, one to one services with me. Because they're not, yeah, absolutely. it's not even a bridge back to working with me as an individual. It's a, um, it's, a it's its own container. So what, what do you have? What you got? Oh, well, I would like to talk about my group. It's uh, it's new. It just opened. It's free. It's for content creators, video makers, live streamers, podcasters, speakers, bloggers, writers, coaches, trainers, artists, performers. <laughs> Anybody who's putting content out into the world uh, should join, and it's free. And we are specifically geared towards people over age 50, uh, people who need a little bit more help with technology part of it because we didn't grow up with cell phones and computers so we understand that because we ourselves are over 
actually, I'm, I'm getting close to 60 now and, and Toby's 73. <laughs> so we're older people and we understand the needs of older people. And that's who we want to, in there. Also lifelong learners, people who want to learn things and are ready to do the work to, to, to make that happen. If you're interested in joining that free group, it's at group.agkmedia.studio. And we'd love to have you in there. Or if you know somebody, maybe a parent or an aunt or an uncle or somebody in your life who's older <laughs> and is into content creation or wants to be, send them our way and we're, we'd, be, we'd be really happy to have them. And I'll probably be there, even though I have to say I don't qualify. That's okay. I'm not, fi I'm not 50 yet. So that's okay. Uh, we don't hold it against anybody. <laughs> yeah, we just don't hold expect it against me. that you are going to be uh, patient with those people who are over. Of course. <laughs> that age. Jeez. Uh, so if you like this lesson, once we got past the driving of a fast car, which is still my favorite part of this episode, I think, yeah. um, uh, I have a marketing self assessment. Uh, if you go to um, sendfox.com slash WCB, uh, you can, can you add that to the chat? I'm Sorry, I've got I'm too many. I'm grabbing it right now. I got it. Oh, okay. Did it. If you go to sendfox.com slash WCB, you can get a free marketing self-assessment. It's a checklist where you can go through and look at your marketing, what you have up there now. It's also a good guide if you're just getting started to figure out kind of the different pieces that you need. It will subscribe you to uh, my marketing newsletter and it would be super awesome if you were on there. So that's all that I have. Should we let's skip ahead? Let's skip Pla ahead. Placid is going to take too long. I have this app that I love called Placid, but I knew today would take a long time. So let's, <laughs> we're going to skip. Dude, that was a premature music thing. We'll skip tweaks of the week. And now <laughs> we're going to do <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Inspirational moment. Today's conservative ideas were once controversial, cutting edge and innovative. This is why we can't be afraid to experiment with new ideas. So what path can I blaze today? We need to know when to let go of what is no longer working like our old News and Views channel, and uh, find a new way to reach our goals, like through our new channel of in New Mexico day trips. So you can't be afraid to let go. You know, I, I we've got 6,000 subscribers on that channel, but they we no longer put relevant content out for the people who, you know, were, were with us back then. So it was time to let that go and start something new. And when you start something new, uh, there's a new energy. There is uh there's an excitement. So don't be afraid to let go of what's not working and start something new. Yeah, I that resonates so much with me. I'm going through a lot of changes in my own life, in my own business. And it, you know, with every new thing, there's something that you're typically letting go of, or your ship is too full, which is also happening to me right now. <laughs> But but there is usually when you go through a major shift, there's also a death that happens, you know, yes. whether you got to close one door to open a new one. <laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah. I think that for me, I've I've I will admit I've been grieving a lot of the changes and, and what's happening, you know, whether it's shifts in my business. Um, as many of you know, I lost my dad um, not even two years ago. So I've been going through a lot of that type of grief as well. So it is it is hard to blaze those new trails. And I, I want to just encourage everybody to keep going. Yeah. Don't be afraid to make it happen because uh, it brings its own special energy when you start something new. Yeah. All Thank right. you. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business podcast, hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then, share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.